yourself. Last month, Paul was unboxing the new Sacco S20, the first in the country. There was obviously no point reviewing there and then. It needed to be used properly. We agreed to catch up after a few weeks, so here we are. The S20 and 243 has now had a couple of hundred rounds through it and Paul and his clients have shot more than 80 deer. Good chance today that we might get one because they won't run away from David's poor stalking skills. But the world is a very different place. Coronavirus oh, has seen to that. Quite a few animals on the ground then, Paul. Yep, it's been two exceptional breeding years. And then we get to February, March, and that's our main culling time. So we'll take out probably 80% 70% of sort of like what we have to take out through the season then um, basically six seven days a week on it and obviously with this coronavirus it's uh, put a bit of a, a mockers on the, the coal because I had a lot of guys coming in from abroad um, quite a few English guys but they're still coming at the moment but basically all the all the foreign clients have, have um, cancelled yeah we need to shoot deer and make a bit of money from the deer which pays for you know the upkeep of whether it's vehicles or staff or rifles or whatever else it is, rent and insurance and so on and so on. I can list a lot of bills. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously now the restaurants are not open or not, not taking customers. Venison sales are down, so there'll be a bit of a glut of venison. Um, already my game dealer said to me about the venison, uh, fallow venison yesterday, um, that he's not taking any more because he takes a lot to Belgium, to France. Basically the borders are shut so he can't transport across to, to there anymore. A couple of other game dealers I know do not really want any more, so they're telling a lot of their normal uh, guys that bring a lot of venison in to lay off, stop, unless they really have to. So a huge drop off in clients means that Paul needs to get on top of some deer by himself. There needs to be a balance between land use and grazing impact. Before we start hunting, let's have some fun and hear what Paul thinks about the new Sacco. Any new rifles, I won't like, use it with clients, but it's been quite good to use it just to give them get a bit of feedback, see what they think, see what the bolt's like. They've always, all of them said, you know, the bolt system's really good. Um, they all said it's really comfortable. A couple of them said it was heavy. The thing is with the heavy rifle, um, this is what I find anyway, there's a work on here, but you get, um, I mean, perhaps you should need to rehearse this first, David. <laughs> <laughs> now, with a, with a heavy rifle, you tend to find a lot of them are nose heavy. Um, you see this, that, eh? that's just, that's just, that's without rehearsing, so quite good. So you'll find a lot of um, uh, the heavy rifles are, like I say, nose heavy, so as soon as you put them there, you'll be like putting them right back here to balance them out because they got so much weight in the barrel and in the, uh, and the muzzle end. Um, whereas this, like I say, it's, it's a really well balanced rifle. And that's, that's why it's good for like free hand shooting and, and, um, off the sticks. Get him? Yeah. I enjoyed that, I'll do another one. Probably the balance and the recoil is probably the, the two sort of like best features and, and the crisp trigger pull as well. Very comfortable trigger. So those three things then. So yeah. So I keep saying how well this rifle soaks up the recoil. And after a little bit of a joke with David, he's brought his best, finest eggs from home. I think we've got duck, is this a duck egg? No, it's not actually. Oh, so what are these, those rock, rock chicken eggs? I'm just testing the shell. I'm trying to get one that's nice and hard, because what we're going to do is take this on the recoil butt of the S20. I'm going to do it this way, because if you do it this way, obviously it's weaker. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. We yeah. we'll yeah. start, we'll start this way. We do one this way, I'll obviously shoot it off the sticks so there's no um, bipod holding it or anything. And uh, just to see how much the recoil the uh, S20 soaks up. And I know it's going to be a whole egg at the end. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> yeah, boiled egg for dinner. Fingers crossed anyway. Not too much tape. No, I've got to hold it on there, No, no. <laughs> That's too low. No, no, it's the top and the bottom, the sides, not the, there. Mm. If Norris McWhirter was here. There, right, right come on, let's get this job done. Oh God, I've got to set some cameras up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get some more, where's my best coat? Right, egg challenge, take one. 
<laughs> I'm putting it right into the shoulder as well, so it's not like. Really? Yeah. <laughs> No, I not even touched it. I didn't even feel it in my shoulder, honestly. Let's do it sideways. Oh! <laughs> that's how... I wasn't ready for that. That's how gentle they are. Wow! Paul is confident that the egg, whatever the orientation, will survive. Into the shoulder, so it's not away from the shoulder. I know what you lot are like. Okay, here we go. <gasps> No problem. I know it's not even touching my shoulder. Honestly. Well, that proves it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliantly scientific. Um, Let me try a bigger rifle. Okay. Uh, we've got a 308. Let's try the 308, shall we? The only other rifles he has in his cabinet are the Sacco Carbon Light, again in 243, and this Remington in 308. Oh, <laughs> yes, that definitely, definitely crushed that egg. I didn't think it was going to do that. Naivety. Maybe this is going to become an industry standard. Yes, eggy. Eggnog. Ah, there you go. When a rifle looks like this, it would be a bit embarrassing if it didn't smash it. After the last one, see how easy it was to break it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> God. Let's put a bit by this time. Here we go. Yeah, close your mouth. Okay, into the shoulder tight. The carbon light also has the lightest of touches and another egg survives. So the S20 has balance and low recoil. Let's see it in the field. Of course, Paul is not just a deer manager. He also runs a shoot. The game season is many months away. However, the conversations Paul has been having suggest the number of birds reaching a release pen near you may be down because of restricted movement across borders. It's obviously come after the game season, but everyone forgets it's now springtime is the time where it all starts again. You had the month off in February to clear up, get things away and, and uh, sorted. And then March time, all the game farmers and all the uh, game uh, rearers they're on it again, they're already planning. Um, egg production's already you know, in full swing. And then you've got the flip side of the guys that buy in from France, chicks or eggs or poults to supply the, the, the shoots out there. So yeah, it's a bit of a concern, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, you know, it's but, ever evolving. I mean, this is gonna go out tomorrow evening. Yeah. Things might change tomorrow evening. You just, exactly. you just don't know You what's... don't know. And you know, you just gotta, uh, it's, you know, end of the day, if you've got your health, you've got everything. So it's not the end of the world. You just keep going and keep, keep you know, run with the shots. Um, so when you're greeting your clients, then are you, what are you doing? The ankle rub? Are you doing a bit of an elbow? Just a, just a, just hey, a, hey. <laughs> <laughs> just a. After some close calls, we finally have a suitable young buck in the crosshairs. Um, shot a young buck, got a bit of hair missing on the back of his neck. If you see, he's a lot smaller than the other ones. It's interesting to see how the does lead him off. Doe went over top of the hill that way, and does went back that way. Just led him. Perfect animal to take, young buck. Probably a June buck. It's a little bit later, hence his size. Since his tusks are a little bit smaller than they uh, should be this time of year. Um, should be a little bit more showing. Got a little bit of hair missing them. It's just starting to molt. You see this one here has got a couple of open bits where he's either gone through a hedge, getting to end of March, and now the molt's sort of like coming on. Um, so yeah, perfect one to take. Good eating. Right, we'll get back to the larder. 
We came to see Paul to talk about a new Sacco rifle, but there is now so much other stuff to talk about too. Who knows what we'll be discussing next time. In the meantime, if anyone wants to stalk a Chinese water deer at Paul's, he's doing some competitive package deals before the end of the month. You may need the meat. If you're interested, email him, paul at childerlysporting.co.uk and you might even get the chance to shoot the only Sacco S20 in the country. And if you want more technical info about the rifle, go to sacco.fi.